Oh, God, no, Jesus Christ. Hello there, great person, and welcome back to Let's Watch the Three Body Problem Blind. So today we are at episode five. Last time there was a lot of talk about God and uh, yeah, about fairy tales and Evans freaked us. So let's see how the story goes on. They uh, caught Ye, so uh, we will see where that one goes and uh, we'll just have some fun hopefully and uh, enjoy the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on how you like this one and uh, yeah, we'll just have some fun. Uh, here we go. Doch ich frag, ich frag mich, wer wir sind. So we are at a ship. Is there a problem, sir? Is this your first command? Ooh, it's Raj. That's so weird. Top man of the last ten years, according to Admiral Cannon. You're the bell of the ball. Is he evil for some reason? Is he with the uh, whatever people that want to push the Santi? Because um, Will did say it in his uh, delirious state that Raj, or I think his name is Raj, was evil for some reason. So let's see where this goes. Fastest destroyer on the water. See my man, so you have a new ship. Cool. Talking to your commanding officers, your college instructors and every other bug cunt you met along the way. <laughs> So he wants to recruit him and he's charming about it, I think. If you ask to see my ID, I'll know you're a sackless wonder like every other top Navy man I am. Oh, you don't like Navy. Why? <laughs> what is written on there? The ship was designed for 20th century conflict, Mr. Wayne. Interesting. I wonder what's on that ID. <laughs> Vulnerable to cheap munitions, and it burns 4,000 liters of diesel an hour. So it has weaknesses, yeah. Defense, I'd spend it on a few thousand aerial drones instead of that. <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Why did you join the Navy? To defend my country. Hmm. So he wants to defend the UK, I guess. That is interesting. I wonder if he and his father ever got into an argument about that or not. Like, not necessarily, but that would be probably a very interesting scene between him and his father. I hope we get one because his father obviously was fighting for another country. Now he's fighting for the country they fled to or migrated to. So it's very interesting. So we're back at the Black Archive for whatever it's called. So how do you know they're going to be nice? That's a good question. Advanced technology and cabin people with more primitive. Yes. What is then, Clarence? It out well for the primitive. Is that so? That's a good question. I don't know enough about that. I would assume there are. Yeah, that's interesting. Has that ever really happened? I mean, I'm not. I know that the that the colonization of, for example, America had a lot of problems. Let's put it like that, perhaps. But um, most of them were also because of diseases and stuff. So it's not about the technology. Like I'm, I'm currently thinking about what almost like if you had a technology that was more like solely that and not like germs and stuff like that's an interesting question i guess that's why we watch this show <laughs> to answer it yeah depends who you ask where's the bad cop yeah where's the bad cop from the santi listener who received my message yeah how does that work what what exactly is it like people have uh, giving me varying degrees of information in the comments and uh, yes it might be considered a bit of a spoiler but i think i guess it's okay -ish. still please try to not write stuff i don't know yet 
Um, but uh, apparently they can communicate via thought transfer. And that's why everyone instantly knows what the other people are knowing. Um, so the pacifist was indeed not part of a hive mind, but they're like just a very connected society. So, yeah. Told you don't do this. This will be bad for your people. But yeah, that is such a bad move. No longer capable of solving its own problems. No longer? That is weird. If she would have said is not, I would have understood it, uh, understood it from her point of view. Like I would disagree, but I would understand it from her point of view. But why no longer capable? What is she seeing? I really, I know I'm currently pausing it. She will probably <laughs> tell me in a moment, but I wonder, I, or I hope that she will, because she's being very fluffy. Like she's not giving concrete answers to these questions currently. So I hope she will do now and let's see if she does. No, indeed she will not. Like she's always spouting fluff. Um, which is interesting. I do not, I do think she does it because she wants to come off as more powerful, more knowledgeable, like it's for her, like holding back information. Um, because every time she's asked, she's like uh, deflecting or doing cryptic shit. Um, so she could have said more, but I, and I hope she will, but yeah. Birds again, interesting. Birds singing. Oh, there's Oggy. What are you going to do, Oggy? They've got at least 10 undercover cops guarding us. No, that's not enough because there are aliens involved. Well, the better movement is after you, so yeah. Oh, are you gonna take pills again? Are you sure you wanna be taking all this? What are those pills, though? No. I know, but I'm sure they're not meant to be popped like candy. Oh! Mmm. <laughs> uh. The thing is, with anxiety, I, like, I don't know a lot about that. I've only read one book about neurotransmitters and stuff, but I do know that certain chemicals enhance brain functions or block them or whatever, like modify them a bit. And sometimes it's like, I've heard, and this is just me hearing stuff, it's not an expert opinion, but I've heard that um, there are certain uh, mental... Um, illnesses that you can actually pretty quickly um, uh, rectify with uh, uh, with some prescriptions that are not that heavy, which is interesting. Like if there's just like a chemical not working right in your brain and like you get the chemical and it works again, like that's of course not, <laughs> that's of course a lot more, um, uh, more rough what I described just now than the reality, but you know, you get the gist. So yeah, Augie, please. Why, why, why do you care for her so much? Like I and and <laughs> I love that uh, that she's telling her off a bit. But you know what I mean with Oggy uh, helping everyone is like she's got her own problems. Like Oggy has some real problems in her life, I think, and she's always always like the 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 big mother or sister. That's how she acts, but. She's really um, not the character that has the backing of that. You know what I mean? But perhaps I still can't read her. Because she's like every each of each of her friends is a bit like uh, tired of what she's doing, I feel. She was like my sweet old auntie. Well, your sweet old auntie is a traitor to the uh, human race. So, I mean... No, the Augie actress is very good. I just don't get Augie. <laughs> well, of course it sounds stupid when you say it like that. I mean, technically they just have to shoot down the ships if they're all sleeping. They they might probably we wake up at all before they arrive. That's how I would do it. Like, I would wake up when I'm at Mars or something. Like, I guess they take a week or something from Mars to Earth at 1% speed of light. Nah, even quicker, I think. So, yeah. But much quicker, so but they have to decelerate anyway. For genius, you don't know much. Wow, man, Augie, Jesus Christ, she's so weird, like she's so antagonizing. Like, I know she wants to poke fun at her to make you know, whatever. 
make the situation better. You've been very cooperative. Yeah, what is she held for? Like, treason of the planet? Like, I don't think that's a crime. What I know is not a threat. Something I didn't realize last time, and I was a bit dumb, I feel. The Lord's currently not here because Evans, like, made it afraid and the Lord moved away for a while. So it might just be her misinterpreting that because she doesn't know what Evans doing, is doing. Um, but yeah, also Lord apparently, like, I thought because it's spelled capitalized, it is like the God Lord, but my Lord is always capitalized. I think I didn't know that. So I guess it could just be a landlord or something. So, and a landlord, like... Or a surf a lot. I want to believe in my own importance, of course. Everyone wants to believe that, yeah. All that matters is this. Yes, what matters? Yes. We're right in assuming he's Vera's father. Ah, uh, yeah, is he? He probably is. In the biological sense. Yeah, so both of them sacrificed their child to these aliens. Like, not directly, but that's so freaked. Because she wasn't strong enough. Yeah, obviously she wasn't strong enough because she jumped into kilometers. Maybe Evans told her. Yeah, perhaps Evans told her. Nobody ever looked at her. She was in her coffin. Are you sure, though? Why would you assume that? Hence, uh, you said I belonged to Vera. Oh, I didn't belong to Vera. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's awesome. She just gave it to her and she didn't know. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Even better than you. No. <laughs> the vanity, it's so cool, yeah. To get from our planet to their planet, correct? Yes, that's true. Judgment Day. Yes, Judgment Day, yeah, what is he doing? Well, you need years for a callback. Yeah, how does that work? But they, yeah. Went to uni, but I can't make sense of that. That is interesting, yeah, how do they do that? There's no possible way to do that, um, that we know. So, um, I mean, where are they even, the Sonti? They, they must have barely started moving their ships, so I don't know. Unless. Unless. Yes, unless. No, there is not. Impossible for us. Okay, so let's see what they're supposedly doing. Could show you what the future looks like. Yeah, why to gloat? Well, it won't be as glorious as you think. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> uh, it's not my best subject. Ooh, history. I like history, but I'm very shit at it. Except for this bit. I'm 1% one. Oh. We're practically brothers. The, the, the question is, though, how accurate are these tests? I have seen YouTube thumbnails where they're like, I took five uh, tests to see where, like, what my ancestry is. And I have not watched that video because it felt like clickbait. But uh, I would be interested in that question now. Like, how accurate are they even? And what, what does 1% even mean? Like, if you have to calculate, like, one half to the power of what is 0 0.01? Like, Six generations ago, I'm just estimating, so it's so weird. <laughs> you did a good job with the old girl. Yes, you did. Either that or we're fucked. You know what? I'm really with Clarence. We're fucked. Like, what are you going to do? Like, these aliens obviously can, like, make people have a timer that ends them instantly. They could just wipe up the race. Like, like what? <laughs> why would you be? Why would you think you could stop that? Like the word of the Lord. Oh yeah, it's their Bible. That's awesome. That's so awesome. We've got 400 years to come up with a plan. Yeah, that's plan true. You know what I would love? If the next season is 200 years in the future. I know it's more expensive. I don't know if they can do that. But that would be awesome. Yeah, it's a shame that parents betray their own species. Yeah, that's... That is such a fricked question. What's with the children? Because attacking the ship and doing something to the children, I think crosses a moral line. Like every time children are involved, even though if they're brainwashed, it's I, I feel like it's a moral line you cross that you shouldn't cross. Ship without damaging the data. Uh, guess. I don't know. Yeah, give me your shite ideas, Clarence. Oh, okay, so you can't do guess. 
but at least he, he suggested it as well. <laughs> MR Canal Authority for next month. What does that mean, though? Oh, there is the Judgment Day. Is Evans very sad that the Lord isn't answering? Everyone puts on a brave face when you're around. Yes. Has he told them that he fucked up, though? I need... To, yeah. I would be worried as well if your Lord's not contacting them back. We always thought the Lord was watching over us. Okay, so... It is definitely the Lord as in God. At least for these people. For Ye it might not be, but for almost everyone else here, because he's talking about faith and stuff, like, it's definitely, and, and the Bible is coming up, so it's definitely not, like, perhaps only Ye is not thinking that it's, like, literally God or something. I mean, otherwise they would have a harder time getting zealots, so. In England, I don't understand. Yeah. yeah don't you? Our Lord truly watches over us. Yeah, he, he seems to think that. But why would you? I've never understood this this image of God, a sentient thing. Why would you subjugate yourself to a sentient thing? Why would you assume it knows better? Like I know that's also very vain to say, but it just sounds like control. You know, it's like what even is better for who? For you or the people you know? Your species? What if that collides? What will that God choose? Like, it's so weird. Does your cat understand why we're sailing? I think God with sentience is diminishing. God. That is all part of the Lord's plan. <laughs> so, like, why? Why would the Santi destroy their followers? Like, I, they would, as I said, they're like 200 years advanced in technology, not more, I would assume. So, like, they would probably also like resources, which the people fighting for them are like, what? But they don't know that. I mean, I, I know that, but yeah. So, Evans, will you talk to the Lord again? Or is the Lord still afraid of you? But I continue to serve you. Yeah, man, why would the Lord trust you now? I continue to serve you. You fucked up so badly, man. We never lied to you, Lord. Catch-22, is it? I don't know if it is, but why would she trust you now? Like, you can't trust you anymore. Like, you're so dumb. It was in character. I loved it, but man. <laughs> Imagine if someone figured out how, how you freaked it up, man. It's so... Well. Oh, it's so good in this one. <laughs> Clarence jump scare, that's cool. No. Not yet. Yeah, she's probably crawling around trying to kill you now. We need you to resume production on the nanofibers. Why? What? How is she supposed to do that? You can implant a time bomb in your brain. Yeah, like... What's the plan here? I, I want to, I, I just, I see that as a challenge. I want to figure it out before they, he tells me in a moment. Um, how would you stop it from going off? Like, I don't know. I actually just don't know. It's, and I need your help. What? You need her life. Tell her that. Like. So you just want me to trust you? Ooh, another test of faith. She's really doing it? Okay, she should die now. She should die now. Oh, no. Depends. If the if the technology with the count on it from Santi directly, then um, she might have a chance because they're currently preoccupied with being afraid. So, if but if it's the people, yeah, they're also in disarray. Yeah, this is actually not that stupid. It's just a gamble. I, okay, I like that. That's cool. I see, I see. But didn't she create them already? Like, what is she supposed to do? That's not gonna help. The thing is, not smoking is probably because the, uh, the, the particles emitted from that cigarette might get into that chamber and pollute their, like, one atom wide string. Like, <laughs> it's like, what? Not gonna protect me. Aliens didn't kill Jack. That is true, though. Drink. 
Also, why didn't Jack have a countdown? Let's go. Let's make. Ooh, I like that. Whatever it's called, where the drink is in. Mm hmm. What whiskey? <laughs> it's nasty. No, no. Only if it is below twenty euros on average, then it's nasty. All other whiskeys, I think, very good. Yeah. Okay, so he probably couldn't afford whiskey more than 20 euros, so it's probably, yeah, so it, it might be nasty. Also, I hope he's not drinking whiskey from that a lot, because normally, you you know, if you have whiskey or scotch, like, you have to drink like this, this to, like, have a good time a bit, and it's not to get drunk. Like, whiskey's normally not to get drunk, really. At least, like, it's, I, I feel it's a waste because you don't taste the goodness anymore if you drink whatever. Whatever. So what's gonna happen now? I mean, I do think everyone that could start her countdown if it's not on autopilot or a computer, um, she would have she could have a chance here. That's good. They don't know that, so it was like a gamble. I don't know why they try it, but yeah. It will probably work. It's not gonna come. Why would the countdown now come? See, why would the countdown come? The aliens are afraid and everyone else is, is in disarray. Like that. I have to say, writing wise, it is a bit of a. Like, it really makes sense that there's no countdown now, but they shouldn't have known that. Like, it feels like the writers wanted it to go like. Like, like it is a situation that's like. It's hard to describe. Like, what happened is like completely within what the show established, but um, why did they try it? You know, he should have been like, be prepared to sacrifice your life for your like species or something. And that could have been the little dialogue they had. And then it would have been more impactful, I feel. Because here it was like, you have this countdown that starts when you start the machine. And we're just going to sit here and start the machine and hope it's not going to come for some reason. Like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously it's not going to come, but... Also shows that the aliens are not almighty, so to speak, if they... I mean, they probably still are very powerful, but they just don't care right now. But from their perspective, it might, it might mean that. What, what, what is she thinking? Why didn't they come back? Yeah, that's a good question. Why didn't they come back? The Lord stopped protecting his flock. Ah. Okay, so they kind of explain it. So I take it back. So he, he had that hunch. Okay. But the next six days are the most important ones of your lives. I like that talk. He's honest with them. Yeah. Who says he's real? <laughs> Who says he's real? I mean, yeah, he might be acting like that. But I do think you need a personality like that to go up in the ranks and where he's at working, kind of so, yeah. Everything he does is weird. Is there going to be a plot twist about Wade, though? Yeah, Mexican bloke pushed his wife off a cliff. Oh, he did. Tequila? Wasn't that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. He told that same story twice now the same way. Is that just an excuse? Did that never happen? It's weird. Clarence is like very interesting because I think there is a lot more to him. Like he's a character that feels very, very capable, even though he's not done that much capable stuff. But for example, the hunt he just had with yeah, the countdown might not be there if the loss not loss not protecting them. That's just like very cool stuff. I really like Clarence. It's a very cool character. Oh, Will. What are you gonna do, Will? Oh, they're with him. How you doing? Yeah, good. Who is that dude? Do we know him? No. Solicitor to the estate of Jack Rooney. Oh, I see. Did he inherit stuff? Sorry, I'm super high. <laughs> okay. So you probably can't take that right now because you're high and it would be like not like in front of a court i guess like can you like because i don't think you can i'm not a lawyer i always thought you could not be held accountable if you're like 
like you can be held accountable, but like not not with stuff like this. Like if you uh, uh, do a treaty or whatever you say a contract contract sorry if you do a contract shouldn't you like and the other person knows you're like not completely there isn't that like not working i don't know left you half of his estate that's a lot yeah well what did Saul get the other half about where to deposit the funds that is also so awesome. Like Rooney didn't have a woman in his life, I think. So he's like he really loved in uh, uh, Will here, and uh, like as a dear friend. And it's so sad. I really wish we could have seen more of their friendship. Like I feel Jack died a bit too early, but it fits that he died. Like you know, but it's so weird because I really love the Will and. Uh, 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 and Jake interactions, even though they were only like two scenes or something, they really had good chemistry. I'll make sure he signs everything. Yeah, see, he knows probably. <laughs> Saul knows that it will be not. I guess not. Uh, Saul got the other half, and will probably give his half to Saul because he's perhaps not going to make it much longer. You want it? Yeah, see. He's like, I'm gonna die anyway. By the latest treatments. Yeah. Oh, only a second one? Only a second opinion? Like with with cancer, wouldn't you be like three or four? Because I mean, yes, if two people tell you it's terminal, I mean it probably is, but make sure. Try to find therapies. I mean Again, it's like this fight against the inevitable, of course, but yeah. But Will is in an interesting position. Will he choose a side? Will he even, perhaps he will side with the Santee? I don't know. Might happen. That's one like, look at the sky, you know? Yeah, I think he has accepted it though, yeah. Have a few really good weeks before it all gets too rough. Yeah. I did the same thing. Yeah, I don't know what I would do. I really wouldn't. Don't know. We could buy five million if you want. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. But what are they gonna do with that? This plotline is, is, so to speak, not going currently. Like, it is going, but, like, there is no bigger picture they are doing here. Like, it is it's currently just... Like, it could be in another show, like, him having cancer and his friends comforting him and stuff. Like, there's no real connection to, like, all this alien stuff. So I'm very intrigued by where this is going to go. Oh, we're in Panama. Great. Outside fibers commencing in 10 minutes. Okay, there. So they are using the fibers for stuff, but I don't know for what communication. We need to age it before we add the nanofiber apparatus. That's so weird. They show a real fiber, but it should be one atom in width. Um, you couldn't see that, obviously. So um, that's interesting. How does that work? Another layer of rust. Make it look like it's thirty years old. Oh, I think they are. Um, camouflaging it. I see. Okay. Yes, sir. Twenty-six hours to Judgment Day. Yeah, he's uh, loving that pun with Judgment Day. I love it as well, though. Is there any way that we can warn him? Warn him? Hmm. This canal. Nobody does. Um. Just because a lot of people die doesn't mean that you shouldn't protect the people still alive. Like what? Wait. But there were landslides, dynamite accidents, and drought. Yes, building stuff. Fox kept digging until it was done. Yeah, that's the like. I really dislike that. Like just for profit, so many people working dangerous jobs and safety being pushed away. Like I know a lot of people in the trades, um, and. Though there are security measures in place everywhere on the paper, most of them can't do them because there's not enough time or they wouldn't get the money and stuff in time. Like they, they, they would work for too long and stuff. So 
a lot of times people are just like, I've heard of people being like um, stabbed and died by a forklift, fell into the ocean with a car where there was no railing or anything. Like many accidents just happen. Being like hit by a, by a, a beam of metal when constructing and like all that stuff, it happens. It happens a lot more than you would assume. Like you would probably assume it like one, like, like I come from a very small city and even there it happens every i feel like every three or four months very small city perhaps a bit less than uh, like less frequently but it's like it's a problem and um it's very a tragedy that these security measures even though they are like we're in germany it's a bit of a meme i know like when that we have got sticks up our asses with security and forms and all the shit and it is true in no sense but the working people they can't afford to go by those so there are in theory security measures even in, like in germany but even there like even where we are stuck up it doesn't work so many people in these jobs and they are so dangerous they get paid so shitty in some places and like they fall down like a uh, like construction site and stuff and it is really really sad and i mean it's 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 one of the dark sides of profit it is and uh yeah that's like they still keep digging why did they dig though probably for their families like that's like yeah or defeating an enemy coming to our world to take it for themselves the thing is mate you are really on this road of going into the darkness of humanity which is not something i'm saying you should necessarily do but it's a question i would pose should you go into the darkness we have in us should you be like yo we can afford to lose 50 people or 50 thousand or 50 million how much I think I asked it last time, what price are you willing to pay to protect yourselves? And they don't even completely know that they're protecting themselves. Like, we still don't know if the Santi are evil. By our standards, they're curious. They want a place to live. Like, I don't know. Like, we've seen them and scientists, but that might have just been the sect. But I would assume it's them as well. Like, yes, they do uh, damage our scientific progress and stuff. So... They are probably not all right, but he's willing to risk a lot here. I hope they bring it up more. It's so interesting. What is your species worth? How many lives gone? I don't trust her. Triple check all her work. What an asshole. I love it though. That's, that's not stupid. That's clever. Like you should, because the thing is, everyone should be double checked. And normally, sometimes it's like if, if the boss isn't double checked because the boss is double checking, like there will might be mistakes. It's not dumb. Like he's very clever here, by the way. How many people are on that ship? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, are they gonna like uh, do the Game of Thrones thing and uh, put it like very um, like they're just gonna cut it in half? Like, cut off the top, like in this one movie, Ghost Ship, I think it's called. It's very famous. Everyone watched it because there was this steel cable that is, like, snapped and everyone, like, was on the dance floor and snapped through the dance floor. Very, very, very brutal, very famous scene, I feel. You probably know it. Is that what's going to happen here? You know what type of ship? Oh, wait, no, they didn't do the chain in Game of Thrones, I think. Battle of Blackwater Bay. In the in the books, there was the chain. Did they do that in the show? I don't remember it. The crew is, right? It's not a naval ship. So <laughs> Perhaps the that's their way of making up for not putting it in Game of Thrones. That would be so funny. Just give me a guess. I don't know. A thousand people on the ship, I would say. Work. Because we've never made fibers this long before. Yes. The supports will hold. The supports so will hold. Why would the supports hold? What are they made from? You want it to work. So they really do a nanofiber across the cha channel, I assume, here? One, like, one string of atoms? How do they do that? Like, from my point of view, from current technology, that makes absolutely no sense. And I've actually read up a bit on uh, nanofibers, like, one layered at least, after that episode where it was brought up the first time, because I was like, this sounds cool, is that a thing? Like, across the channel, no. No, no, sorry, no. If anyone knows that they are working on that long, but yeah. 
what their names are or why they deserve to die? I mean, you could make the argument that they are traitors to the species, which I guess you could do, but I mean, there are studies in psychology, and yeah, I mean, you probably know them, that um, the more people there are in danger, the less you care. Like, if there's one person, you care. If there's a thousand, it's like just a news headline, okay, you know? Um, yeah, that's like very sad, but also she's asking this to a soldier. A, a soldier probably has thought about this a lot more than she has here. Again, she's naive, I think. But I know it's important. They wouldn't have sent Yeah. But we don't know for reasons that we don't know. And you're just like, yeah, cool. Ong is so weird, like, her points are not dumb, like, I get her point completely and it is a good thing to ask, don't get me wrong, like, these questions should definitely be asked, but she knows there are aliens that can snap their finger and end people, and this is their, like, the only hope they currently have. And she's really, really rude here. Like she can't, she comes off as again higher and mighty a bit. And I don't know why. Perhaps I'm perhaps I've I've got a bias against her actions. But it's so weird. Because what she says is correct. Like, what's it worth? The thing is, yeah, what's it worth? That's a good question, Augie, but why are you like, come up with your own plan then. Like, you can criticize easily, but come up with your own plan. Do you have a better idea? If you don't, I mean, that's... From their perspective, I would argue it's their only shot they currently have. That's their only thing. Like, what else are they gonna do? They, 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 I don't think they can nuke the ships. I don't think they will be able to do that. Um, and as well, as Clarence said, currently the Lord's not protecting them. He might start protecting them again. I assume he will this episode. I I actually assume that the Lord will save them from the cable, at least some people. So that's going to be ugly, but I don't know. Like her position feels very surface level. I don't know. It's more like, not even service level, it's also the wrong word. That's the wrong word I'm using here. It's not service level. It's, it's good questions. But she is currently completely distrusting them when she knows there are aliens. That's so weird. But I mean, it's good questions though. Like, it's so weird. I'm not like you. What do you mean by I that? Up for this. Uh, well, you created the nanofiber, so you did. That as well, by the way, this is this is this is a great conundrum actually. It's the Manhattan Project conundrum. Like she created this technology of nanofibers, now it's used to end people. And even though, uh, yes, as I just said, like it's it's probably their best shot, it's still ending people. So her technology here is again the spirits I, I called up. Like she created it. Now it's out there. Now they can use it, military can use it. A military will just take it and use it. Of course they will. I mean, it's it's like I guess she's so I I the way I understand this to give her her credit is like she understands that and that's why she's like that. So it's actually very well written. I was just a bit uh, I do think I was a bit biased because she does not make a lot of sense to me. But I do think now in hindsight, now having heard that, it's a good, very good perspective from her because it shows. It is, I think, she asks these questions because she's so afraid of what her technology will now do because it's out in the world. And she hasn't considered it. He, she was just like, yeah, we need to end the aliens. And she hasn't thought about the consequences of the ethics of the research that is there. Okay, I take everything back I said about her. She's very cool <laughs> here. What do you think is happening? Yeah, what is happening, though? That's a good question. I think we're at war. Are you at war, though? That's not completely clear yet, but I mean, ending scientists is pretty bad. That's some nice CGI. That's a good CGI ship. Also very good CGI background. I do think it's all CGI. Also, why wouldn't they assume that the ship is not protecting it against aliens already? 
Um, isn't that a bit obvious? I don't know. They're probably like, oh, there are there are poles in the water. That's probably nothing. <laughs> I mean, she's probably not okay. Her technology is just used for ending people, but then again, her technology is at the same time used to save the species, potentially. It is probably also, and yeah, I, I'm sorry, I probably paused a lot here, but it's just, it's, I just love this scene, actually, this the setup. I just love it. Because she also isn't used to being in command over people's lives. She's in command over people doing research. Like it's a different kind of command, completely different. Also, awesomely done. Okay, I'm really in love with the situation now. <laughs> but it took me some time to understand and perhaps I was really slow in this, but it's very well set up. Very, very awesome. Oh, of course, they show the people in the cantina. And the children, yeah. Oh, and he's still doing the the simulations, interesting. Is he gonna bite it though? I, I, they will probably come in here now. But how can they monitor the surroundings of the ship and the planet? Poor, I, my theory is my hypothesis, I'm sorry, my hypothesis is they're doing it through electromagnetism, so all communication stuff. Oh, they probably created a grade as well, so they will be filtered and not even sliced. They will just be filtered here. Oh, God. Yeah. It is working, you just don't see it because it's like welding behind the line, I think. They will just just end the people. Because that's something I read up. Uh, so if you have a nanofiber, it would like, several substances would like melt behind it again. But probably not flash. Oh man, I think this is going to be a shit show. Oh god. Oh god, this is going to be a shit show, I think. It is working. Oh no. Oh, it's going to be ugly. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Oh no, I don't want to see it. Oh god. Oh no, he's going to get filtered. He's going to get filtered. He's going to get filtered. Bye. Okay, it was just one line. Okay. I thought he was getting filtered, but you just got sliced. Oh, so it does. Uh, it does indeed not well shot, so it's just slicing through. Um, but why do they put it so high? I mean, most like it's a three dimensional ship. Why would they not have made a net? Perhaps they didn't have the time. See, there's a net as well. Oh, God, yeah. Why won't you go to the ground? Little boy, you're gonna die horribly. What was that? Oh, she's gonna die here. Yeah, bye. Oh, God. Yeah, so it's welding in the metal and the, all the other things are dying. Yeah, bye. But he just has to duck. Like, what's what's the problem? They just have to duck. So... What's their plan exactly? Making them be confused? Like, it's just one line. I would have used a grade, but... Then again, whatever. That's a cool effect, though. Ouch, that hurt. Oh god, this is so brutal. That is so brutal. <laughs> I knew, like, man. But how can they hold that up and how does it have that much tension? I guess this is more science fantasy. Is he gonna die here, though? That's a good question. Oh, Felix is gonna bite the dust, I guess. What's he gonna do? 
Just duck, man. It's no problem. Bye, Felix. Okay, okay. So they do have more than one. Okay. I, I, it, it looked like they just had one. Okay. I see. Oh, he might really die here. Interesting. Oh God, no, Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, my nightmare. Yeah, by heavens, was nice knowing you. I'm actually very sad. He was a good actor. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. I do think they waste their characters a bit too quickly, but it's probably because it's very condensed. But like uh, Evans was, he was in four scenes, like, and he was a really cool, interesting bad guy. And in the end, now he was just just a zealot that got uh, off, and I mean, fricked his race. But yeah, interesting. That's very sad. He was cool. So apparently they did... Yeah, okay. So they did not do a net. They did many, many layers. I see. I see. Also very effective. Okay, now I'm confused. Why is it going apart now? Hmm... That's so weird. Why would it go apart now? I assume they want to tell me that, yes, it was like put into layers and then the inertia, like when the ground stopped, like put it apart. But I don't know. This is very, very iffy. It's a very awesome scene, though. Like it's creative. Um, but yeah, it's uh, scientifically not very sound. <laughs> but I mean, it's sometimes you need rule of cool for stuff. But I mean, whatever he had in his booklet is now gone, so, like, their Bible is gone. Yeah, I would cry too, your technology did this, that's such a heavy situation, man. And she's only having this, I mean, she's probably in a shock. I hope she's crying more in the next scene, because that's like, she's never ended anyone before, and this is technically on her a bit as well. Because she was there in the command center. Congratulations, Dr. Salazar. Yeah, that's so fucked up. Why would you say that to her? I mean, I guess she doesn't understand. See, there are things that are still like in one piece. It's, I don't know, it's a bit inconsistent. I'm such a scientist, stuck up asshole here, I know, but. <laughs> Sometimes rule of cool trumps everything, I guess. Oh, is she going to find a little child or something to make her even more sad? She should vomit here. Like, if she sees a, a unalive body here, she should really just vomit or something. See, like, she's so composed. Why is she so composed? So, I guess she's in shock. I guess she's just in shock. That was such a gamble, though. Like, they clearly want Mr. Evans. Like, because they looked for his, uh, yeah, unalive body. But, like, how did you make sure that he stayed in one piece and the thing you wanted? Like, that was such a gamble. Like, they, they were this far apart, the wires. Like, what? <laughs> See? Yes, it is in one place a piece now here, you know, but that was such a gamble. Like how how like how big is it? Like 20 centimeters? The wires were 40 apart, so it's like not completely, but I do think it's almost a 50-50 chance that, that thing would have gotten sliced. Like what? <laughs> because he also had it upright. That was such a gamble. Oh no, it did get no, it didn't get sliced. Okay, I mean 
That was really... <laughs> It was really, hey, we have this idea, let's slice a part of ship, it will look cool. <laughs> I, I take it. It was a cool scene. It was a cool scene. I can enjoy those things, even though I know it's like iffy. <laughs> 3.8 trillion years. Um, so we're doing this. Are we going to do this? Fine, we'll do this. Uh, Quantum encryption, what is that supposed to be? <laughs> like, what? What is it doing? So normally when you uh, encrypt quantum information, um, it does not mean that it is like in a, in a way encrypted that you can't hack. It is that you will see when someone um, is listening in on your transmissions. That was what, is, what quantum protection is against. If someone is, um, let's say you're sending messages to your friend and uh, someone is in between taking that messages, you will know that they are you are being listened into. That's the thing about quantum encryption. Uh, or whatever, like at least with quantum communication, you know, it's like it's like you will notice that you're being listened to because your message is suddenly turning into gibberish, you know, but uh, that's the basics. So if that's it, like, it's just like, what, 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 what was that quantum encryption? <laughs> Perhaps he's talking about something else, but... <laughs> The, the idea is that quantum, uh, 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 it is secure because um, it is secure mostly because uh, you will know when you're listened into, like the communication is like secure through that. And, um, and also, by the way, so if the person gets your message and tries to send it to the um, to, to the one you were sending it uh, initially to, that person also will just get gibberish. So it is also, um, in a way, it is also secure. Like, but it's more like um, as uh, like another way to to put it is like you're sending messages to your friend with a with an envelope, and in that envelope there's a bomb that will just burn the envelope if someone opens it. That it's not your friend. That's what quantum encryption is. Like, perhaps they are having another pie, but yeah. Um, you could crack it open. I mean, the thing is, um, quantum computers can... Um... No, I'm not going to get into that too much. It, this is basically science fantasy. I said from the beginning, brute force cryptography just isn't going to... Yeah, brute force is probably not going to do it here. Happened. Okay, something I will make up a bit, but that's how I would. So if they're a bit in the future, what you could do is perhaps you could use um, you could use quantum uh, states to get more than uh, zero and one as possible code. So your code could get a lot more complex, perhaps. So I guess that's what they did. Like they just made the codes more complex. Why is it open though? That's fishy. Okay, so uh, yeah, the Santi probably were like, hey, here, it's on now. What about that? So fun, unknown, CXL. Wow, 102 petabyte. Holy shit, <laughs> that is so much. <laughs> That is so much. What? What? What is that? Yeah, that's more than my phone as well. That's so awesome. Anyway, sorry for your loss. Wow. Well, it sounds like he wasn't much help around the house. Yeah, holy shit, man. He just offed. So her all the whole organization, as far as we know, currently is gone. Like her group is gone, and Evans' group is gone. So who's left? Like now they now it's gonna be a normal war. Did they let us do this too? Yeah, they yeah, they did. Let us destroy their ship and kill your boyfriend. Because the boyfriend is fucked up and they're not angry. Their reasons are beyond my ability. Oh, come on, yeah. I know they're coming to save us from ourselves. Why would she think that? 
What do you mean by that? Yeah, that's true though. Because they are stronger than you are. The thing is, the thing is, the way I see her is her her understanding of the Santi is currently she knows they're just a bit more advanced, but she just hopes that they can save us because they have a different perspective and she's believing in that because it's her only hope for the race, even though like it could be wrong, but she's believing it. That's what believe is. And um, she knows they are not gods. But then again, she does talk here again about them as if they were gods. I don't understand why. Because it's perhaps because she wishes it so badly. But then again, she thinks she's the best physicist of the world as well. Like those are things that don't really mix. But then again, if people are a bit uh, radicalized, some of the things they do say don't make sense. Like that's one of the signs. So, yeah. Faith's good. I have faith too. Faith that when they get here, we're going to wipe them out. Yeah and kill their followers and break up your party and arrest you? Oh, it's a good question, so... That is also a good question. I've been wondering that for a while. What is that? Oh, this... Oh, this is... Interesting. Uh, for another conversation is between Evans and your lord. Oh, he's gonna tell her the fear part. Put together the best bit. Have a listen. That's gonna be cool. Friends really are, and what they really think of you. Yeah, it's so cool. Let's see. That's where your troubles begin. <laughs> That's cool. I really love Wade's dialogues. He's awesome. So, is she gonna believe that, or does she think it is doctored? What's gonna be? Yeah, can't you lie? That is so interesting. Ooh. Yeah, Evans fucked this up so badly. That's so good. That's so awesome. We think we understand now. Yeah. That's so, so scary. Yeah. A liar cannot be trusted. Yeah, man, she knows now. That's so awesome. What's she gonna do now? Her world is shattered. Ah, oh, it's awesome. Oh my god. Awesome. What's she gonna do now? My lord. She now knows they left them. Oh, that's so awesome. What's gonna happen now? I don't know what's gonna happen anymore, like nothing, it's so awesome, I can't wait. What's gonna be now? I have no idea where this is gonna go now. Because basically all antagonists other than badass woman that we had are gone. Like, they're all gone. What's gonna happen? Oh, awesome. Yeah, your friends are off ending some uh, people on the ship hello oh oh i thought it was badass woman so sad it was wade what what for most people would be flattered that the boss came to pick them up for work but he's not your boss yeah like what he's everyone's boss he's the boss of the people he wants to be the boss of i guess i still wonder who he like who he, who is he he's got a lot of power yes why should I believe you? Higher dimension. Higher dimension. What are you going to do now? To the subject with Commander Verma before. Yeah, you have a dinner. You understand that kind of thing? Nobody really understands that kind of thing. Our, Our brains evolved in three dimensions, not ten. So she's going to go for string theory, I guess. But, um, but that is still true. Um, you can only understand higher dimensions from analogs. Like, you can understand them from, you know, probably know the Flatland books or whatever it's called. Like, if you understand the relation between 2D and 3D and what weird stuff can happen there, like, that is an analogy for, for example, what can happen between 3 and 4D, which is basically like quantum space and normal space. And um, the thing is, quantum space is right now a mathematical construct. 
like we use it and it explains the stuff we ran into. So I would assume like, again, it's the utility argument, by the way, I made last time um, with the real thing. Like it is of such utility that if we assume these quantum, whatever dimension things, entities are a thing, we can explain the world so much better than without. Um, so it is, so the quantum dimension and that sounds a lot more cipher than it is. It's basically a four dimensional <laughs> column vector <laughs> for those of you who know a bit of mathematics. So basically, if you have three dimensions and you would try to pinpoint a point anywhere in three dimensions, you need three coordinates, uh, length, width and height, so to speak, like to go there. And with 40, you need a fourth coordinate. And that's why it's so weird. And in quantum physics, you need four um, four coordinates to place an object, so to speak, in this quantum dimension, even though, again, it is first and foremost mathematical, but we can observe some stuff, for example, and I found that was the most mind-blowing experiment I know. Um, so if you have a spin, um, it's basically if you measure something, it can go uh, into an upward or downward direction, so spin up, spin down. Um, it's not, it's nothing spinning, it's just a name. Um, it's also an analogy to some classical physics, but it's like not something spinning. But anyway, so if you have something that points upwards, and if you rotate it by 360 degrees, what does happen? And in three dimensions, it would just point upwards again. But in four dimensions, it would change. It would point downwards when you rotate it through six, 360 degrees. And that is something they did. So if you rotate a spin by 360 degrees, it doesn't point upwards again, but it's, it, it points downwards. And that is one of the coolest experiments. And that is probably the experiments where uh, the experiment where I would say, okay, 40 quantum space is something where I would say, I mean, that experiment is best explained by that because 4D can explain it because in 4D that happens. Like if you have a uh, 720 rotation in 4D, it does go back to the original point and it changes signs after 360. So it is in line with what we observe with spin. So spin is something in 4D, but we can only observe it in 3D. And again, it's the shadow thing I talked about a bit. And again, that is also an analogy. Um, so yeah, and our brains evolved for three dimensions or four if you count time, like you can perceive time, which is often forgotten, but time is more a thing of um, relativity, general relativity, and often not used in quantum physics. Um, and quantum physics, time is only important, roughly speaking, and not completely like there are other little things, um, but when you have... Uh, something that changes like energy potentials that change so to speak then then you can't this is a bit technical so there is a schrodinger equation you probably know that from the guy with the cat and it describes um the four-dimensional object so to speak that is something like an electron or a spin or whatever and uh if you solve that but you all most of the time solve it exactly with time independence like with with you put in a potential like an energy wall for example um, and then you can solve it and that was probably way too technical and i would be able to probably explain it a bit better if i had more time but i don't really want to derail it here because i would be here a bit um, i might if you're really interested tell me i might do a little extra video about it but there's also videos out there that do it so i might just link one like just tell me what you would love most and again, brain is evolved for three spatial dimensions and all higher dimensions are, we can't access them with our brain. We can never do that. Like it's physically impossible. So all higher dimensions in a way are always conjecture and are always not real because they're not material, because we can't touch them, so to speak. Like that is also, by the way, I never thought of this. So this is a new thought I just had. Because people are like, yeah, the world is material. What do you mean by that? Is, there, is something you touch, is that your definition of material? Something you can measure? But if, you, if it's something like quantum objects are not completely measurable, like you just see shadows of them. And again, 
figuratively speaking, it's not a real shadow, like it's, it's the same principle. But you can only observe the shadows of quantum objects. Are quantum objects then not real? Like we can describe them mathematically perfectly, but we can't measure them directly. We can just see their shadows all the time. So is the quantum dimension real? Like, and some scientists say yes, and some scientists say no, it's just mathematics. You know, and I've seen two people argue about that for an hour. A philosopher and a quantum physicist, and like the philosopher also did do quantum physics in a bit. So like they were able to discuss it very professionally. But it is again the question of reality. What is real? What is material? Last time I, I went uh, with a bit of an easier explanation. I said material or utility. But even material, nailing that down is hard. What would you say is material? I hope you heard that. I just, <laughs> I just knocked on my desk. Is that real? You would probably say, yeah, it's material. Is energy real? It's not really material. I mean, and also particles are kind of like mass is also the same as energy, but let's not go there now, but e equals mc squared. But <laughs> that's also not the point. Like, even if you would say energy is real because you can measure it, you can't measure quantum objects completely. You can just can't model them mathematically very well. You can do that. Like, the quantum objects are mathematically incredibly well modeled. You know, um, but they are like waves. Quantum objects are waves. The particles are just the shadows. That's, by the way, the wave particle duality solved. Like it's not sometimes a particle and sometimes a wave. It's always a wave in quantum space. It's always a particle when you observe it. You know, that's, that's the that's the thing. Like, I don't know why anyone ever says it like that. It's like a lot less mumbo jumbo than you. Sometimes it decides on the experiment based on the experiments. No, it doesn't. Quantum objects is always a wave in quantum space. It's always a particle when we observe it. We can just infer the wave from many particles we observe because then it does distributions that look like waves and then from that we can infer the quantum object, you know? But we can never see it directly. So is it real? Is an electron in 4D space, which is its full description at least, uh, 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 like the, not its full. I mean, if you go by string theory, it might have more even, but I am pressing X on string theory a lot currently because it's it's a mathematical gymnastic that can't directly be proven by evidence yet. So it's just a nice dream currently. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope this didn't derail it too much. I know she just said one sentence and she's going to keep talking now. So we might derail it again. But um, that is the thing. Quantum objects, as far as we understand, are at least four dimensionals in space. Uh, and and that space part is debatable. Like some people would probably say like, no, it's just another four dimensional. Like, oh, now I realize that's the problem. Like, it's not like space we know. It is called a space, but it's just a technical term in mathematics, by the way, as well. Like you don't have to literally interpret it as a higher. It's hard. It's hard. And I, I'm really derailing now. So I will probably stop here and we will see what she says here. By the way, 11, string is 11. To the extent we are capable of understanding them, yes, I do. Okay. Of your boyfriend's last mission leads us to... Yeah, what does it lead you to believe? Why? Uh, I, uh, I can't wait. Panama Canal. Yeah, she is pretty pushy, but it's her right to ask questions. I mean, she's a scientist. She will ask you questions, mate. What should you expect? She's a good scientist. And I want to say this, she's the best scientist in the show currently, I think, like depiction-wise. She's awesomely depicted. Like, she feels like someone, if I would meet a scientist, she could be someone that, yeah. Sophon, interesting. I don't know what Sophon means. Might be a particle. O-N is often a particle. Electron, photon, phonon, it's a... Sophon might also be a particle. What? Don't know. No one has seen this yet. Anybody seen this yet? No, sir. So she's the first one that sees it. Let's show it to her. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What do we do now? You prepare yourself for something very strange. Yeah. I've heard that. Very strange. How strange is it going to be? I meant... 
Oh, it's a uh an executable file, so to speak, for the virtual reality. Oh, that's so awesome. Let's go. Oh, no. What do they want to show us? Is this going to be a declaration of war or something? Oh, let's go. Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be so awesome. Ooh, let's go. Let's go. Ooh, yeah. Is that the future? Are they going to send you? Hey, mates, this is what we're going to do to your world, you pricks. You lying fucks. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they read your minds. So, I mean. Oh, it's his first time in the simulation. That's awesome. Or it might be their home world, but I don't think it is. Oh, are they going to use the. Oh, no, they're going to use the other baddest woman. So that's the Santi. She might also be the Lord. I have not heard. I've not heard, listened to the voice. She might be the avatar of the Lord. That is interesting. Oh no, okay. So she's just an AI. Yeah. They might be just we an AI. Anything like this. this is all for your benefit. Yeah, cosmic horror. Very good. Why? Why did you bring us here? I actually don't like this trope that much, by the way, as a horror fan. And I'm a, such a horror fan. Check out my horror story. It's linked pinned in the comments, you know. <laughs> yes, I, I promote it a lot, but I, I don't do sponsors. I will never do sponsors on this channel. I'm saying it here now. I don't want that. So you will never have to listen to me ramble about Red Raid Asshole Legends. But check out my story. Like... And then you can support me there and the guy who reads them. But yeah, like I'm a I'm a an awesome horror fan. And um I think it's a brilliantly scary idea. I love the idea of there is something if you look at it, it's so scary, man, you won't like it. Like it's so terrifying. But I do think the next step is showing me something that actually is that scary. And um you could do that. I, I would have several ideas to do that, but just saying it is like it's 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 gotten a bit like many people say like stuff like that, and it's turned into a cliche where there's no substance. Um, what I really like, there is a situation. I once like the best way I have this principle seen done is in the never-ending story. You probably, if you know The Neverending Story, it's a book by Michael Ende, which is a German author that lived, I think, till 98 or something. Brilliant, brilliant fantasy writer. Also wrote Momo, um, which is also a book you should definitely read, and Neverending Story as well. It's the probably the best German fantasy story. And there is a scene in the book, and if you've seen the movies, it's not in the movies, the scene, because they cut it, because for this reason they couldn't depict it. So there is a scene where a character goes to a... Like, he has to pass three gates to go to an oracle. I mean, so it's basically this here, test your character to go to the oracle so you get more info. I mean, but it is brilliantly done. One of the tests is there is a mirror and people have to go to that mirror and look into it and see their true self. And most of the people who go there came out screaming and kill, killed. Um, yeah, they ended themselves. You know, I can't say it. Um, and... I read that as a child and that was so heavy and that was scary because then the, the protagonist goes to the mirror and, and the fear starts rising in his brain and like you, you hear him think about what horrors he could see. What are you truly? What is what is inside you? And um, the, the gist, I won't spoil what happens. It's awesome. It's an awesome scene. You should read the book as well and also check out my story. But yeah, it's like I really love this idea. But just saying, yeah, you, you would be so afraid. I don't know. I don't know, disgusted perhaps, like, I mean, technically she did say you won't like it as in it is not pleasant, like it is disgusting perhaps, like the worst thing they could do is um, use this weird fear of, like there are images of just people with thousands of holes and they make you vomit and dizzy, like I would design aliens like that, but you probably couldn't get that through Netflix because people would actually vomit from watching this show, like I'm not kidding you. Um, so don't look that up. Like if you like, it makes you sick, physically sick, looking at pictures of things with many holes. And uh, yeah, anyway. So let's let's go. Anyway. To tell you that we're doomed. You are doomed? doomed. Yes. Oh, so this is diplomatic. Huh. Yeah. 
that's why we're doomed. Why is why is it that you're doomed then? Oh, that's true. So is she going to recruit them now? That would be awesome. If now she manages to convince them characters with like at least weight has very strong like drive against this technically. So I hope they will try to convince him. You weren't so different from apes. Yeah, that's true. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, exponential growth. 10,000? Yeah, I would have said the same. Yep. 20. I mean, atomic to computer is like, I, I think that's the same time, like didn't Turing create the first Turing machine in World War II? Is an imitation game about this? Was I lied to by the movie? I was probably lied a bit, but to a bit, but yeah, anyway, she probably means internet. To get from hunting to farming and farming to industry and industry to atomic power. That is a good question. How long? Yeah, probably though. A million years? Our catastrophes aren't really catastrophes. We've never had to start over. That is true, but if she has got, um, if she's got, like, if they develop this evolutionary mechanism of dehydration and then they were able to, so, like, go against that and make some kind of stable societies, they would not completely be vanquished every time. Like, they have to, there's something has to carry over. Some minds have to carry over. So I guess it wasn't that bad, even though it was horrible. But they aren't wiped out completely. Reach you. By the time we do, you will have long surpassed us. Yes, that's my point. They are 200 years in the future. I, so my estimate was probably really on point. So it, she's got a point. Like, if we don't nuke ourselves to shit. You will destroy our fleet and then come back and destroy our world. Yeah, they will probably do that. Yeah, yeah, we would do that. This is not a conquest. It is a funeral procession. Holy shit, that's so dark. Yeah. To keep us from moving forward. Oh, so that's why they end the scientists. Oh, that's so dark. But it's also reasonable in a fucked up way. They're like, we will stop you here so we're a bit more than you. So then we can perhaps coexist. And um, so they try to be our gods through this first and foremost. Or Evans and Yev seen them as that and introduced it through that so they were first like more than us now they might be like we want to be the same with you coexist and because otherwise we would be lesser than you that is awesome man i love this that is so well written we are going to kill your science oh great you're gonna do that have fun with that what are so fun yeah what are so funs one we have turned into a sentient computer yeah, you can't make computers that small. How would you do that? Ah, uh, what? <laughs> that is hard sci-fi. What? You can't make a computer that small. Yeah. Yeah. It's impossible. It is impossible. by our... Yeah, I mean... What is the cipher going to be that enables them? They are hidden. Oh, are they now? Okay, so they're going with string theory. I mean, it's a cool idea, but... Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That looks really, really awesome. Yeah. And focus them on a single proton. Holy shit, that's awesome. That is so awesome. I love that idea. I love that idea. So they, they, they imprint a, by their sci-fi fantasy logic, it, it probably is, but uh, they imprint a whole dimension onto a proton, I guess. That's awesome. There's a lot of information on it then. But shouldn't it have that already? Why aren't you imprinting it on quarks? Probably too small. But if they have that much energy, they should be able to control their suns. That's the biggest plot hole I currently see, um, that they 
do not are not able to control their sons when they have this much energy. Like this must be a fuck Tom. When we unfold its higher dimension. That looks awesome. Comes something very large indeed. Interesting. Haha, <laughs> it looks so awesome. What are they doing? Ooh, that's an awesome effect. What's it doing? Oh, it's creating a... Oh no, it's just shielding the planet. That looks really, really awesome. Even though the premise is probably untrue, but it's an awesome, awesome, awesome idea. Wow, that's so awesome. That is so awesome. That is really awesome. I also like the the way that it was just a plane. It should have been just a line, but then you could see it. So it had two dimensions. Um, but yeah, that is awesome. That is really... It, this is like... If you are not a proponent of string theory, it makes no sense. Because... Now it, you know what, even if there was no string tree, we might have higher dimensions folded very smallly. Like, it doesn't mean that. That is, that is not true. Um, but there is no, th no theory, and I'm really meaning theory this time, in physics that describes uh, small dimensions, and that is verifiable currently. You know, so it's like all a dream. But I really like the way they do this. This is freaking awesome. Like, because... Because a photon would then not be a 4D object, which is it, which it is even more, like it's higher dimension. You could even, like, it's, it is basically a, a proton is three entangled um, quarks. So it is already, um, a quark is an elementary particle. So a quark is four dimensions, so four dot four dot four dimensions. So it, it is also uh, 16 times so 64 dimensional technically, like in a way. So, um, like, that's interesting. <laughs> that's so interesting. And they, they're like, they, this is, this is the, one of the coolest mix of imagination and science I've ever seen, I think. What an awesome idea. Four so fun. So, wow. Interesting. Interesting. Why? Here, we see in here at the same time. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, no. But it's a cool idea. It's a cool idea. It's a cool idea. Um quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement at first is not transmission. If two pieces are entangled okay i will rephrase that it is transmission but not in the way they're depicting it here um if you have okay so i will yolo this now uh, so don't show me physicists if i get some things uh, a bit imprecise because i yolo this but so basically so this this is uh, the explanation of entanglement okay so you could post it those two particles let's say proton a proton b whatever or spin up spin down uh, it's it like what is entangled is basically also um, property. So let's say, let's do it really easily. Spin up and spin down and you entangle them. So you get this. Um, you get a new object. So this entangled object um, is one object. That is also why some people say entanglement is the same as wormhole. So if two particles are entangled, they're the same thing. An entangled state is one object. It's not the constituents anymore. It's one new entity, one entity in two places, so to speak. But because they are entangled, they are connected. And that's why people also say they're wormholes. Some of them say that, and I would probably agree, because it has properties with wormholes. You know, EPR equals, you know, it's, it's that, that, old, that new old idea. Um, so you have, you have this entangled state now. Um, so if you measure this now, you will do this. 
it's not entangled anymore. So you have either this paper or this paper. And the thing is, if you know where you have this paper, you also know the other person is this paper. But then tangle, entanglement is destroyed then. Um, and if you if you want to entangle these again, you have to put them together again. But they have to, if you want, as far as I know, if you want to entangle something, they have to be in the same place first as they were here. So basically it was like this, like, like so from A, so from B, you entangle them. So they are spatially, like they're the same entity. But if you do, and they could on their own, by the way, they could do calculations and be computers that work on their own, but they're like also together. Um, but the moment uh, you measure a property uh, on this one, the property will be determined on this one. And like that property will be split, like they won't be entangled anymore. And for example, if you want to communicate now, and I'm guessing they will say that they will, yeah, see everything they see and hear, we see and hear at the same time. If you measure this, let's say spin up, this will be spin up, this will be sit down from the example. And if you now be like, yeah, this is spin up, but yet let's make this spin down and they're entangled. So this will switch. No, no, that's like, that's mambo jumbo. Like you can't, you can't operate on the, because it's not entangled anymore. Like, you know, it's, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to say, if we have this one here and you have that one there and they are like you did a measurement on this one, that property will automatically be determined by the other one and you know it. So I know if I have spin up here, I know four light years away it will be spin down. But the catch is you first have to send it. So you first have to send the SOFON for light years, so it will take four light years. And that is, by the way, why it's not uh, communication faster than the speed of light. But um, and also because if you measure this, you still have to go to the other party and confirm it. That that like that you were right about them having, for example, spin down as you predicted. So you can't communicate with it. You can't. That's like a very big myth. I actually did publish a paper. Or I, I don't know if I, it is out yet. Like it has passed review. It will be out this week or next week or the week after where we talked about exactly this. Like it's a paper about misconceptions, like people, students and university students and uh, science teachers, misconceptions about quantum entanglement. And this was one of the core misunderstandings. They like the one of the core misunderstandings about quantum entanglement is that you can enable uh, like information is exchanged at uh, faster than light speeds, speeds or instantaneously. Like it's wrong. You cannot exchange information with more than the speed of like quicker than the speed of light. Never. It is correlation. You just know something about the other object, but you still have to make sure. And if you enable, if you do like if you operate on this one so on, it would take the four light years to to with the other if they're not entangled, obviously. And if they're entangled, you would destroy the entanglement. Like that's the that's the gist. So. I hope it made some sense. I know this was again a big science lesson, probably, but um, and and yes. Uh, uh, by the way, you might now say, yeah, but if you say this is a wormhole, can't they look through the wormhole, so to speak? And no, it's not like that. Like it's really just that the space-time geometry is like it is the same object. It is like the typical, uh, you know, the blood let's just fold the space, put it through. It's the whole like. But then you fold it apart. You know the the meme, the meme of like I think it was from Event Horizon. You know it is it is it is like that a bit. But um, so entanglement. Either you have entanglement, and uh, that, that like that's possible. And then you know these two things are connected across um, distances, so to speak. Uh, they are connected through almost. Um, every distance you want. That is true. But the moment you pull them apart to measure it, like it is destroyed, and um, it is also one object, like it's something new. Like it is not uh, up and down combined, it is something new. Very important as well. But uh, I like the idea. I like the idea. So let's, let's actually have some fun. Let's try to do this scientifically. Um, 
let's say it is a wormhole, but through the extra dimensions they have access to with their new technology, they can indeed string the extra dimension like through the wormhole, so to speak, of the entangled particles. So they can do that, like they can just take this extra dimension that's made up here. But I mean, why not? <laughs> we can't prove it, we can't prove it, so why not assume that could be a thing? So extra dimension is what what is um what is used to be like uh, uh, to be a wrapped around, like like running through around this object to speak and then you could somehow do it you know it's just basically the excuse of extra dimension will be wired into this so that it works it's very unphysics but it's it's it would like if i was the sci-fi writer that was uh, supposed to like fix this that's how i would have written it but i mean no one really cares about the details it's a cool concept even though it's like not how it is but a proton has oh that's good reading them to nearly light speed is easy yeah of course I mean, even accelerating protons to, to light speed is like om almost light speed is not that hard, I think. Oh god, my particle accelerator colleagues are gonna shoot me. Um, 90% speed of light or what do you get? Or 95? 99? I think 99. It's fundamental level. Okay, so they were sent to four places. And then? Questions will become chaotic and meaningless. Again, so what they just showed was it has to be taken as a metaphor. Like, because particles are not like that. Like, because they're waves. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's a cool visual. In place of truth. I love that though. The idea of undermining science to uh, make them fall back to faith is an awesome fucking great genius idea in writing. I love that theme, by the way. Um, but um, yeah, like they couldn't control the uh, sophons. Like it's not like entanglement doesn't work like that. So they would never be able to like they would have to pre-program the sophon, give it an AI that is supposed to go to the places where science is done, then it would work. Like, that would be my explanation. You don't need entanglement for this. So the timer's also not real. It's just... Perhaps they just fry their brains otherwise. Ooh, awesome. We will teach you how to fear again is such a bad as awesome line, man. I love it. That was awesome. So what are they gonna do now? Mm. So so phones are interfering with experiments. And as I said, it is not necessary to have quantum entanglement here. I don't know why they introduced that actually. It doesn't it that's so weird. I mean I talked about it for so long that it wouldn't work, but they don't need it. Because they just said they imprint an AI onto a proton, which is like awesome. Like if you have this this, this one higher dimension or whatever technology they have, that would be possible. You don't need entanglement. Like they could be asleep and like the AI on the proton flies around here and stuff. Like it's perfect. Like wh why why use the entanglement line? I guess it just want they wanted to sound to sound cool and and modern, but you don't need it. Like my suggestion would have been. Um, just write the sophon part, which is awesome. I like the idea a lot. Um, um, but just don't go to, for quantum entanglement. Why would you do that? Like, you don't need it here. Because who learned of fear, that also. Who learned of fear was... And and this is and and I I was confused I think by the comments actually because you all were like um, yeah it's not a hive mind uh, they don't think as one and stuff um, it makes a ton of sense now they just talk to an AI they never ever talk to the Santi other than in the messages that Ye sent out what they are talking to was an AI and the AI is like a GPT like if GPT would be with we that's how it would act. 
And a GPT wouldn't understand fear, it wouldn't understand metaphors necessarily, because it's a computer. So that also, like many people have said that in the comments, um, that it was illogical that the Santee did not have concepts of metaphors, but perhaps just their AI doesn't have it, and they do. Like, they're just talking to an AI, and the female voice is an AI. Like, it's not the Santee. I actually think without the quantum entanglement, with just the cell phones acting on their own as little, like, high-dimensional machines interacting with experiments on the elementary particle level and stuff, like, that's awesome, that's enough. If they take out the quantum entanglement, actually, I think it would be even better and more logical, everything would fit more. So, I don't know. What do you think? Because I don't know why they would need quantum entanglement here. I don't see it. It makes a lot more sense if they like if Evans has just been talking to an AI. You know? And the AI is just uh, written in a we. You know? Oh, so what's going to happen now? Are they starting to completely destroy the... But how could they do that? I thought they were localized, the cell phones. Why are they not localized anymore? Oh, they destroy electromagnetic technology, I guess. That's awesome. Nice. Nicely done. That's how I would strike at humanity as well, probably. Just fry them with an electromagnetic pulse, which, like, this is probably what that is. <laughs> the monk with the phone. That's funny. Ooh, and the bug again. Ooh. So we're starting with the psychological warfare. That's awesome. Um... So this, but this is all like, this is the last charge. It's it's like, if you think about it, um, A, they, they now have to attack them. They do have to attack them because otherwise they will be met with a force they can't deal with. So their AI is going haywire right now. It's so awesome. So their AI is now going to destroy, try to destroy the world through electromagnetic, um, electromagnetic interference and stuff. That's awesome. I love it. So the extra dimension seems to have to do with electromagnetism as well, at least. Oh, she sees it. Awesome. What is she gonna do? I can't wait. What is she gonna do? Because all she believed in is perhaps potentially gone. I need her to be on the sky as well. It would be awesome. Oh, one of the sofons has expanded, I guess. That's awesome. That's really awesome. But can't you shoot at it now? I mean, it's unfolded. And it's um, like the AI is imprinted on that cell phone. Oh, that looks awesome. That looks so awesome. Ooh, <laughs> what an awesome effect. Fujiyama, I think. Or is that in Africa? No, it's, I think it's the Mount St. Helen? No. It's a, a volcano, I think. So they've wrapped a dimension around the Earth. That's awesome. Ah, that is awesome as well. And you will probably hate me for it, but I will just assume this all is the AI. Because they and they are asleep on the ship, the Santi. And it's part, like, the AI is so well trained on what they are and what thing and what do, that it is like them, but it is not them. That is actually, and I will go with that hypothesis until it's proven false, actually, because that makes a lot more sense. And it also brings a new wildcard into the mix. Also, it's a human eye. Awesome. Oh, there she is. She got some medical treatment. What are you gonna do now? Are you gonna believe in your overlords or not? Yeah, she is gonna be so far gone now. Oh God. She's probably their best, uh, best uh, asset now. Oh, that was the episode. 
Yeah, badass woman is gonna be the alien's best asset if they uh, if they even want one. Okay, so next episode starts with mass panic. That's already brilliant. I love it. But yeah, that was a really awesome episode. I don't. I, I'm sorry, I did get derailed a bit through the science because they. I felt they put in too much science for their own good. They didn't need to do it. Sometimes less is more. Um, so I hope you learned a bit about entanglement and um, also about uh, uh, yeah reality and quantum physics perhaps today. Um, I love it though. Like I love this idea with the extra dimensions we don't know. Like because as I said, though I do not think string theory is the correct approach, and it's just a mathematical um, something they play around with mathematically. Um, still. I really like the idea of extra dimensions on a small scale. Like it doesn't mean just because string theory isn't the best. Yeah, so I had to take a little break feeding my children, but I am now back and I could think more about it. And uh, it was probably from a from an action perspective and science fantasy perspective my second favorite episode. Um, I liked episode three more a bit because it was more creative with the science fantasy um science wise though it was the most uh imprecise one i would say like where they took the most leeway um but i don't mind i i really love uh, love stuff like this anyway because they put forth some very interesting aspects like orgy understanding that her research might or was used to very very terrible uh, effects or um, that they now have the problem of okay we now know they're coming for us and they're antagonistic now um, because at least the AI is so um, it's interesting so, so I'm hoping a bit that we don't completely have a us versus them now because a beta's woman is still there so I'm having very high hopes for her now because she's the only character that is human and antagonistic that we know of currently because yeah, I think now knows that we will not be saved because they like told us we were bugs and you squash bugs, I guess. Um, also a metaphor, interestingly, like you are bugs is a metaphor. So the AI has learned from Evans. I'm so sad about Evans' death though. Man, it was so sad. Can't wait for where it goes though. As I said, like it's gonna be very interesting. I do hope the Will and Saul plotline or the Will Saul uh, plotline mainly will come back into into the show or it will start to tie into the show. I really enjoy it, but it is weird seeing a plotline that seems to be detached. Um, I do know there are several metaphors as well in that story, like for example, the cancer being either the Santi or the humans, depending on what you want to uh, want what side you want to take i mean for ye it would be the humans for 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 wade it would be the shanti um but it is very well set up now and uh, i love the idea of the sophon um and i will just go with the with the with the uh, hypothesis that they are talking to an ai uh, that is emulating the shanti and uh that would solve all the problems i had with the science and it's nothing wild um, quantum is the, the hip thing. I mean, I know, but, um, I would love to know if the author wrote that or if it was added with the entanglement, because I do think entanglement was, I think in 67, they thought of it first theoretically and in the eighties, they proved it. Uh, or showed the evidence that it is a thing. Also, by the way, quantum computing does also work on entanglement, at least most of them. Yeah, all of them. I mean, that's the point. And the interesting thing is what I said with, like, if you put them apart and then you can read them, um, that is the problem in quantum computing as well. Like, it's called coherence. Um, like, they will, like, the quantum state will fall, fall apart, so to speak. And so... Um, yeah, just just as an aside note, um, I really like uh, 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 Yin Chen. I think her name is. I really like um, Clarence Wade also, and Badass Girl. Of course, I like her as well. And um, all the characters are very cool. Orgy is still weird to me, and I think it is a weird thing. 
uh, her acting was like like they should have shown i think and with should have is my opinion i i think i would have shown her barfing when she saw the foot because her being just in shock like we see that like in movies often and we had a horrific scene but her just vomiting of guilt or breaking down completely they could have given the, her the actress a bit more to do um because i think the actress as i said is good very 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 talented and she does this nuanced thing inside her that's brooding very well and um but i i, I would have wanted a much more crass depiction of her understanding that her technology just was used to end children's lives without warning brutally like they bled out like it wasn't their brain sliced apart or anything like they bled out and you're not like they didn't show like this but i don't think you would be instantly like gone i mean even if you get beheaded i think you will still feel I don't know how they found it out, but I think I read it in some science uh, a magazine or something like if you're beheaded and your head falls down, you will still be conscious of the fall. So the children knew. Um, and I do think she should have had a much, much worse reaction, perhaps. And I hope that's what they're going for. She will. She had that reaction, which it might like, don't get me wrong. It is a reaction that is plausible, like being in shock, of course. Like, don't get me wrong. It was just I would have loved more visceral stuff after the visceral scene. Like it would have fit thematically as well, like her having the big reaction to this big thing that happened. But I mean, the trauma is also realistic. I mean, it is. But um, then next episodes, I, will, I want her to really dig into that and really be like very like down. But I'm afraid they will not do that because now the world is at an, at an edge, so to speak, and they might fall down the edge. Um, yeah, let's see where they go. Um, I've been rambling again. I hope you enjoyed it. I know as again I, that I was a bit uh, 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 a bit stuck up perhaps in physics because it's just it's that iffy stuff. And uh, um, yeah, I mean that's how it is. But I hope that's why I'm watching these as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you have a very great day. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're still here. And I will see you uh, next next time again next Friday. Bye. He looked into my eyes, and I almost threw up from guilt. I'm angry and sad, but I also know that something like this happens every few generations. It happens to remind us that something endures in the mountains, deep within the rocks. That the past is still here, resting beneath the hills, and occasionally it sends its nightmares up to us. If you enjoyed this little tease, consider checking out my new story, The Waters That Hate It. It is available now for free on Vidith 22s YouTube channel. Link is pinned in the comments. Thank you for watching and take care.